Hey guys, Greg Benz here. And before we get into this week's tutorial, I briefly want to mention my brand new exposure blending master course. This comprehensive course includes over seven hours of video instruction, written tutorials, raw files, and much more, all designed to help you master the process of blending multiple exposures together using luminosity masks in Photoshop so that you can extract the maximum color and detail from your images. So if you enjoy what you see in this week's tutorial, you'll definitely want to check it out because I go much deeper into related topics. But that brings us to this week's tutorial, which is all about how you can use luminosity masks in any software. One of the most common questions I get from other photographers is, hey, how can I use Lumenzia or luminosity masks to work in Nick Color Effects Pro, Luminar, Topaz, whatever other software you use? You can do that now. Whether or not that software has luminosity masks is beside the point. All you need is the ability to save layers and bring them into Photoshop and you can unleash the full power of luminosity masks with any software program. So let's jump into Photoshop here. We'll show you the process using Luminar. We're gonna process this wintry scene to extract more detail from the foreground ice. There are a couple ways you can approach this and I'll show you both, but we'll start first with using a smart object, which will work anytime you can go to the filter menu and access the option you want. So third-party plugins that show up on this menu will work with smart objects and that's the method we'll use first. Simply right click on your background and choose to convert to a smart object. Once you've done that, go up to filter and open up the filter you want to use, which in this case is MacFun Luminar. I now have access to all of Luminar's tools, but I want to specifically use the Accent AI filter, which has a single slider and does a really nice job of bringing out this foreground detail in the ice. It has a little bit too much blue cast in the shadows, but that's okay. We're gonna target more of the highlights of this ice to apply this in the image. Overall, we can see from the before and after view of this image that we've extracted a lot more detail in the foreground, but we've also done some things that are probably pretty unrealistic in the sky and other parts of the image. So I want to target this adjustment and I don't have the control I need inside of Luminar, but that's okay. We'll simply apply what we have here and then selectively mask it in from Photoshop. Click apply. And you should now see that your smart filter has been applied with a smart filter mask. For the moment, just disable that smart filter mask because we want to create a mask based on the underlying original image. We just need now to find the right luminosity mask to target Luminar where it needs to be in the ice. So if we click on lights, we see a pretty good selection of that ice, but it's also selecting some of the water and probably a little more of the shadow areas than I want. Taking a look at lights too, doesn't have a whole lot of that ice selected. So let's start with lights and we'll simply customize this particular luminosity mask. Double click on levels, and if we bring in the white point a bit, we'll get a stronger selection of the ice, and then we'll bring in the black point to try and reject more of the shadow areas and some of that water we don't need. So now we're much more targeted to the highlights in this ice. Of course, we don't wanna apply this luminosity mask to the entire image, including the sky, which we know is a problem. So we're gonna apply a secondary selection on this preview. Just hit L for the lasso tool, and now we'll just drag a lasso around this foreground ice area. And when we do this, we're telling Lumenzia that we wanna use this luminosity mask, but only in this selected area down at the bottom. Click on our target layer, we'll click on mask, and now we have the option to apply it as a layer mask or a filter mask. Using a layer mask would selectively show the layer and effectively hide most of the image up above. What we wanna do here is use the smart filter mask to apply the filter in selected areas. So choose filter mask, and then reactivate the filter so we can see it. And now you can see that beautiful extra ice detail going from before and after. It's done a tremendous job of bringing out that ice detail. We haven't brought in too much of that overly strong blue, and we've done nothing to adjust the sky, which already looked great. So we've got a really nice adjustment here, and we're able to use luminosity masks with Luminar by using it as a smart filter mask here inside of Photoshop. Let's step back now and take a look at what we can do if you don't have the ability to work with smart objects because you're not using software that shows up under the filter menu, or maybe you just don't want to use smart objects. There's another way of working. Let's close this and we'll start over fresh by opening up both the image and I've already gone ahead and processed the image with Luminar. So we have a separate version of this image that we can open up. And you can see here is the original image and here's the standalone image that I created with Luminar. So if you're using software that does not work with smart filters, you just simply save a copy, and now we need to take this and move it over to the other image as a layer. So right click on it, and we'll choose to duplicate the layer and go target the base layer where it needs to be. 
we'll say okay we can close this now and we now have this layered version on top here is the luminar copy i'll just rename that and you can see before and after the adjustment and of course it's including all the things we don't want right now so we just simply need to target it with a luminosity mask once again we'll temporarily hide this adjustment so we can work from the original image for our masking click on lights we're just going to create the same adjustments we did before so we'll bring in our white point we'll bring in our black point and then hitting l for the lasso selecting the area that we want to use from the foreground so we're making the exact same mask we did before the only difference between this approach and the previous is in this case we're going to apply the mask to a separate layer as a layer mask instead of a smart filter mask on the original layer as a smart object so we'll click on mask we now have that mask available make it visible and you can see we've made our adjustment to the foreground so there you have two great ways to extend the luminosity masking power of photoshop to any third-party photography software